Hey guys, long time no see. It's been a pretty exciting and interesting last couple of months. Uh, I can't talk about some of the things I've done, uh, but I did just come back from uh, a great trip visiting friends in New Haven, Connecticut. And uh, out of that trip, I uh, think we solved a, a little bit of a mystery in the Star Wars parts universe. So, uh, the Blockade Runner. You all know the ship. You all know the general idea of what was put into it. Um, we have, over the years, uh, banded together and identified almost all of the donor kits. Um, but there's always been this one thing that eluded everyone. And that is whatever was used inside the 11 engines serving as the, the engine exhaust piece. Um, I have been mildly to incredibly <laughs> obsessed with trying to figure out what this thing is for years, um, as have many other people. Um, it's whatever it is, socketed into a four inch acrylic tube, inner diameter being a little under four inches, of course. Now, uh, I have had the extraordinary fortune to talk to some of these people who uh, worked at ILM at the time and uh, other people who have handled restorations of the blockade runner over the years. And my air conditioner just kicked into high gear. So long story short, Paul Houston remembers going across the street uh, when ILM was in Van Nuys and purchasing a quantity of something that was uh, probably aircraft surplus. It was a surplus store and whatever he picked up was clear, uh, was plastic, and could withstand a high temperature. Uh, we have had the good fortune of being able to see the back of one of these pieces uh, as it exists today and have uh, come to an interesting conclusion. Now there are photographs that were taken at the time that I don't think have been published or even seen publicly that came from cameras uh, of the ILMers uh, from 1975 and 6. We're, we're talking about something that was purchased in mid to late 75 and was used on what was at the time the pirate ship, which we call the Millennium Falcon, which then became the Blockade Runner. That's a tale for a different time that you probably already know. But a lot of resources were put into this six foot model because they were working under the assumption this was the hero ship. So uh, it was built fairly early on in the process. It was made from machined acrylic, tubular acrylic, uh, had a metal armature, very, very robust, very, very large, very, very heavy, I would imagine. So this piece originally started as a clear plastic, probably aviation surplus, right? Uh, and it was shaved down on the, on the outer edges to fit. So the pieces that exist today that we have, uh, you know, the modified part ha is missing a little bit of meat along the outside. Uh, I had the opportunity to have uh, one of these parts grown in nylon, you know, that sintered, uh, like, it's like a nylon powder and a laser um, fuses it together and there's no supports. And I was very curious to see what the end result would be because uh, growing this on, a, on an SLA printer is going to uh, be kind of a bear with all of the cleanup from all the supports and I you know eventually need 11 of these. We're starting to think that we might be able to have this done <laughs> in a small run in styrene if we can figure out how much it's going to cost and if everybody would be able to commit to buying it because the tooling's going to be crazy expensive but you never know we might be able to pull this off. Um, and as it stands after talking to everyone over the weekend uh, we think we figured out what it was made to do and realistically how it was mo how it was manufactured so it's all sort of clicking into place finally um so this is my quick wrong render i, I made a file in 3d uh, because i had limited time to get the file to get it made to get it to the the get together last weekend um so a couple things on this are a little little off um, and it really kind of doesn't matter from the front because this is what you're going to see inside the engine, right? And uh, the back end is a little different from the actual piece. All right, so we have photos of lighting tests, 
that Richard Edlund did uh, initially it, uh, the construction let me start with the construction so it's a four inch tube inside this tube is a metal tube that has a light source in it at the time in whatever 1975 it was a red light probably pretty hot because they didn't have big LEDs then right so uh, there was consideration I would imagine for this being warmed up and uh, that's why we think it's a high temp plastic so the back of this thing you can see is like a truncated cone shape uh, and there's all these little flower petals on the original part we're almost convinced that we're, we're pretty sure that this was open on the outside and the way my part differs from the actual part itself as we've seen it removed from the blockade runner uh, there is a little lip so this little this little flower petal sh th this this whole structure should be out a little bit and there should be a little indentation so that when this is in the sleeve there's a little bit of a gap just along this ring okay um, and there is a photo of a, a smoke test whatever whatever was blown through the vipers in Battlestar Galactica so that you have the light and then you have to have a bunch of like exhaust the blockade runner was initially built to do that because there ha there is a photo of a bunch of shit flying out of the back this allows that to happen and this was perhaps we think it was constructed specifically for that feature and then it was abandoned and uh there you go so we don't know if it was picked particularly for that or if they just adapted it anyway so you've got this inner metal tube that would lock into here right and so that creates a perfect seal for the light and for was it freon was it co2 i can't i can't remember i don't know i've been told before and i've just forgotten but that would not get into the light right that would be a completely sealed off uh assembly and then around that because there's a little bit of space between the tube and the inner metal light tube assembly they would have blown the whatever and it would have come through those little holes right here and out this outer ring and so functionally we think turns out that is what they did blockade runner wise pirate ship wise what is this part for though uh probably changing airflow you would have air probably coming do we think it's coming in this direction you think it's coming from probably this direction it would come through here unhindered right but when it came through here and the bear in mind the original part this was sealed off and there's like a little little outer flange that was completely removed the air would have come in here and then would have blown into here so uh sound deadening uh taking large amounts of air and reducing it to a smaller uh quantity without you know turbulence uh it's a supposition but this is exciting because it gives us one more little avenue to explore to try to identify what this is so i just wanted to rather than write out a really long facebook post just babble about it because uh you know we, we started talking about this a couple days ago uh because I, I brought this up to show it off and uh, we started looking at the photos and i was like you know sorry this is like you know not a perfect example um and chris reif was the one who brilliantly was like oh shit okay you've got a steel tooling right and you have uh it's, it's slide mold or whatever uh the it would allow the little fingers of the metal to come in here you know the back would would clamp you've got your mold you inject your your plastic this pops off and there's all these little uh ejector pin marks on the original part on each of these little uh humps and so that would you know push the part out of the mold and it would fall into a pile or whatever so you know there's no manufacturer marks and these were pressure fit into the blockade runner and you can you know just pull them out uh on the model today and uh every little bit of information about it, a part's functionality 
or perhaps, uh, you know, like what would its uses have been theoretically in the real world before it was adapted into, you know, a model kit part. These are all things that uh, don't solve the mystery, but help you understand maybe where to look um, to find that, that piece. And we honestly are at a point, I, I will admit, as obsessed as I am with one day hoping we figure out what this dumb thing is, um, we're, we're at a point where even this is more than enough for a model uh, to look amazing, right? I mean, it's just kind of like, you want to solve it to solve it, but we're here, we're there, we're good to go. So yeah, now the question personally for me is, do I want this as the final example uh, you know, a nylon centered print, you know, for the 11 inserts that I need, or do we want to try to actually, you know, get it made in styrene professionally? Um, so I'm going to look into that and, uh, I'm very curious. I think my next step will be to prime and paint this sample, uh, piece to see how it looks. It has a little bit of a texture to it, but you know, it's an engine exhaust. It's going to go inside, uh, you know, the, the tube. It's not, um, I think it's gonna be uh, acceptable. It's pretty damn smooth. It's probably smoother than, it's definitely smoother than an FDM print would be. And it's probably going to be just as smooth uh, in appearance as a SLA print off of a Form 3 once I, you know, get it primed. Especially if I use uh, like a, a auto filler primer. It has a little bit more, um, you know, kindness to it uh, in, in the way it, it lays and self-levels. Uh, so, you know, really what you're, you're looking for in this visually is this outer edge, and, and it looks exactly how it looks uh, on the model. And then looking inside, if you look inside now, uh, someone has cut a... I don't know if it's cardboard or plastic card, but they're, they've blocked it off and it's just black. Uh, pirate ship and early block in runner photos, you can see back to all these little pedals. And uh, the only difference visually on the inner surface between the original part and what I've done is that I've made a straight slot and it, there's actually a draft in the real piece uh, because, you know, it, it needs to eject out of a mold. I didn't model that in because, again, I was pressed for time. So I'll probably revisit it, uh, you know, digitally before we start chunking them out. Uh, I certainly would if we were going to do it in styrene, and I would make it exactly how it looks now, even with the inner step, in case somebody wants to shoot smoke out <laughs> of the back of their blockade runner. Uh, you know, just a little bit of pride. Uh, do you know if you can do it? Why not? Um, but again, it wouldn't it wouldn't make a difference visually, I don't think. Uh, so that is a little insight into the crazy dumb crap that we do uh, every day here in Studio Scale Land. So I'm also working on the Endor Forest Ranger and the uh, uh, Ion Cannon, which I do believe now will be uh, all the parts will be molded and cast before I glue anything down. So uh, anybody else who wants to follow along can just, you know, buy castings of the parts and not have to go buy 600 bucks in model kits or whatever. Because um, there's some vintage stuff on there that's not, of course, not available anymore. Why, why would it be easy? <laughs> so, and, and the ball, um, we're going to probably cast the ball too, just to save time um, for anyone who wants to do styrene who doesn't want to do styrene plating, which I did not want to do. Um, that was uh, that was expensive to get made only because I have a 12 inch sphere and I had to have uh, styrene vacuum formed over top of that ball to then be able to cut the panels properly. So all that's gonna be coming up shortly. I will be back at this more often and uh, I hope you guys are having a great summer. I cannot wait for fall and I cannot wait for winter. It's only like, I'm in Maryland, so uh, colder weather is only like, I don't know, we're in the end of July, so it's like four months away. <laughs> so uh, everybody have a great rest of your whatever until I see you again. Ah!